Hey guys, have you ever been on a worship team before and there was so much tech talk jargon going on that you were just totally confused? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today on Church Talk. I had one of my worship team members come to me and give me a great idea. She said, hey, you guys are often talking about things and we have no clue what you're talking about. And she's like, thank you for teaching us and we understand these things now. But you should do a video that tells about some of that. So guys, that's what we're going to be talking about today is understanding some of the tech talk jargon on your worship team stage. So guys, thanks for joining us on Church Talk, and let's just dive right into it. Number one, we're going to be talking about what is meant when someone says stage right or stage left or house right, house left. So behind me, we have stage left. So if you are on the stage, you're on the platform, and over to your left, this is stage left. So where the piano is, where the keyboard is, where the guitar is, this is stage left. And then stage right, meaning on your right side while you're on stage. So over here where our electric guitarist is set up, this would be stage right. Of course, then self-explanatory, you have stage center. One thing that we don't normally talk about is upstage or downstage. And with a stage of this size, you really don't need to be talking about that, but not, that's not to be confused with, with like front stage, backstage, because backstage is actually what's behind that you never see. So that's why there's uh, not front and back, but up and down. But the other thing you will hear is house right, house left. What's meant by house is talking about the soundboard itself. And then if you're talking about house right, house left, if we stand down here with the congregation and we look towards the platform, house right is on your right, house left is on your left. So. So that's what is meant when we talk about house right, house left, stage right, stage left. So if, uh, if someone says, hey, we need, we, need to turn, we need to do something stage right, then, uh, then you know that we're talking about the right-hand side of the stage if you're on the stage, or it's the left-hand side of the stage if you're facing the stage. So just a little bit of quick terminology there. Another thing people were confused about was the term clipping. Now. A lot of times we would throw around the, the term clipping and this particular worship team member, she was like, I thought you were talking about cutting hair. So it's kind of the same thing, except instead of clipping the hair off, you're clipping the audio signal off. So as that wave goes up in the signal, you're cutting it off and it's like the, the audio signal just kind of shatters. And that's what that's the way I kind of think of it. Now, there's a lot of technical terminology we can go into, but we're not going to get into that. So when you hear the term clipping, basically it means that, that the, the wave in that, in that uh, audio signal is being clipped or being cut off at the top or and at the bottom. And so the sound just sounds awful. And so a lot of times what fixes that is another thing that we talk about is called gain. Gain is, the, is on, the, on your control board. Many times I've seen people that will go and they'll turn up or down the gain because they think it's a volume control. It is not volume, but it does affect the volume. So the more gain you give, the more power you're giving that channel. Or when you, when you gain something back, you're taking away a little bit of power. So it affects the volume, and it affects the volume everywhere. So like on our worship team, we use in-ears. And so anytime somebody turns up or down the gain, it affects our in-ears as well. Um, and if you're using wedges, it'll, it'll affect your wedges too. Gain is not volume, but it does affect the volume. So when we're talking, when you hear somebody say, we need to, we need to, to gain that back a little bit because it's clipping, you know that we're putting too much signal into your channel. We're cutting off the, the, the signal and we need to give it a little bit less power so we don't cut that signal off. One of the other things that, that we've just recently started uh, is, is our talkback mics. And when we first started using the term talkback, people was like, what are you talking about? We're not talking back, you know, what, what, do you, what do you mean? A talkback microphone is, this microphone does not, nobody hears, this is our bass player's mic. Um, nobody hears that microphone in the house uh, that goes directly to our in-ears and to our audio team. And each musician 
our drummer has a talk back, our guitarist has a talk back, and then I have a talk back. Over, that's why there's two microphones over here. If I'm playing keyboard, then I have two mics. I've got my talk back mic, and then I have my regular mic, which isn't out here right now. Um, but I have a, um, have a cool uh, um, foot pedal. That it's a push to talk pedal. So when I push this, it unmutes the microphone and I can talk to, to the team without anybody else hearing and then let off of it and it mutes out the microphone. Uh, so when you hear someone talk about talkback, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about a microphone system that is closed to only the, the sound engineers or the band that uh, not everybody else hears so they can talk back and forth to each other. So it's not a term like, don't talk back to me. It's a term where we can talk back and forth to each other. Let's go to the term DI or DI box or direct box. Now, what a direct box does, we're using two of these. One of them, this is upside down. One of them is for, is for our pad. One of them is for the keys. But this is basically just a box that will plug in our uh, our keyboard or a guitar into or a bass into and it comes in a quarter inch out an XLR and there's a button on here that this is a really the one that I really wanted to get to It's called pad now a lot of times if we have some some noise then one of our techs might ask hey is the pad on and we'll take a look at this and this has some of them just have a button this one has a dip switch but you can see here where it says uh, 0 dB negative 20 dB uh, so this tells you what you're going to be cutting out your pad is basically going to be turning your signal down it's going to be lessening your signal uh, by whatever the rating is on here so if it says negative 20 dB means I'm going to be lowering this down by about 20 decibels uh, Decibel is another term you might be hearing. All that is is just a, a unit of measure for sound. The other thing is another pad. We talked about the one pad on the DI box. There's another pad that is, uh, that is a lot of times it's when you're playing a keyboard, the pads are on the keyboard. But for me, I kind of have a, an iPad that's running a pad. This is a lot of pads going on, so I can see where people get confused. You got one person saying, hey, is the, is the pad on? Because they're talking about they're getting clipping. And they're like, why is this clipping? Oh, because the pad's not on. You got to lower the pad. And then at the same time, we're talking about the pads, which is a synth sound on the keyboard, or sometimes it's ran from an iPad. And then you have the iPad itself. It's like we got a ton of pads going on. I don't know why we do that uh, on stages, but we do. So those are those three pads we're talking about. The iPad, the, the synth sound coming from the keyboard or coming from a computer or whatever, and then the actual pad on, on, the, on the DI box. Okay, one of the other is an IEM, or that's an in-ear monitor. So if you ever see the term IEM, you're like, what's that stand for? That's your in-ear monitor. Um, so if you're already, if you're using wedges or using wedges, it's another one of those terms. Uh, if you're using monitors on your stage, a lot of times people will call those wedges. Um, so not to be confused by any other type of wedge, um, but it is just a monitor on your stage that's kind of looks in like the shape of a wedge. Uh, and then IEM is your in-ear monitor. And then another that I talked about a moment ago is quarter inch. Um, quarter inch basically is just the connection point. So a lot of times a guitar has a quarter inch end. It has a, a what some people call mono. Now on this quarter inch cable, see this is a quarter inch. So this is what our bass player uses. He will plug this into his DI box or his direct box. Uh, and then from out of that, you have an XLR. Which so an XLR is usually what plugs into a microphone. Uh, some people call it a microphone cable. But the XLR is basically just the end that plugs into a microphone. It also plugs into your soundboard or any other audio device. Um, and so basically you can just, you can call it a, this is what an XLR is. It has the three, three pin connection there. Your microphone has, has the male end and then this has the female end and on the other end is the same as the microphone. It's, it's another male end. So this is all that's meant by an XLR. So someone says, hey, give me a 10 foot XLR. They're looking for a 10 foot cable 
with XLR ends. That's all that that is. So when you hear somebody talk about, I need a quarter inch or I need an XLR, they're talking about the type of cable, the type of connection that, that they need. That's, that's all that is. And the last one we're gonna be talking about is very simple. It's called a drum key. Now we had um, our drummer the other day, he asked, hey, where's my drum key at? And, and a few of the singers, they were like, what's he talking about? Why does he need a key for the, you, if you're a drummer, you're, you're like, yeah, I know what a drum key is. But if you're on a worship team and you hear someone say, hey, can, can you help me find my drum key? A drum key is, let's, let's go to the drum room and see if he has his drum key. I don't see it. <laughs> so a drummer, he was like, yeah, I can't find my drum key, which is actually like right now it's the same. I come in here into the drum room and I don't see his key. But basically a drum key fits on these lugs. And it's just a, it's a, it's almost like a, a, a quarter inch um, hexagon, but it's, it's specific to a drum set. But it's just a little wing type nut that allows your drummer or your tech to loosen or tighten these lugs to tune the drums. Right, thanks guys for watching Church Talk. I say if it's the type of content you all like, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share it. Be sure you like the video. Help me to share this. Help me to get this video out to other people. So, um, so yeah, hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe. Thanks for watching Church Talk.